What is going on guys and welcome to the Wrestlemania 30 review here with the J-Man. What's up? How you doing? I'm doing fantastically bad. <laughs> um, we are moments away. What? I think it, we're approaching like 40 minutes now off of Wrestlemania 30. What a pay-per-view it was. I thought, I mean, I'm surprised with some of the outcomes. I'm very excited about some of the outcomes. I'm sad about some of the outcomes. Mixed feelings throughout the entire pay-per-view, but I'm pleased of the 30 years in the making that came out of this pay-per-view. What do you think? Um, well, some the first bit was absolutely... It was like a godsend. It was like God came, came to WrestleMania 30, and then the rest of it was like if Damien came to WrestleMania 30, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but... Like... The pre-show was the first match, and it was the Usos versus Rybaxel versus the Real Americans versus Los Matadors in a fatal four-way elimination match for the tag team championships. And um, pretty decent match, I thought. I thought I saw great action between all of the tag teams. Um, but the Usos were your winners. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this match in particular. But after the match, we saw the breakup. I'm pretty sure. It's confirmed the real Americans have broken up indeed because I'm pretty sure, I, if I remember correctly, Cesaro hit a giant, his, his swing on Jack Swagger. And then, um, now let's get into the main show. What did you think of the set of the WrestleMania 30? Well, the set, the set was brilliant. It was um, everything I imagined. Like, it would be in the history books and that set would be like the example for every other set because I don't think they can do any other better until WrestleMania 40. Yeah, it was absolutely, absolutely just wonderful set. I loved when the colors changed, when everything changed for each entrance. It was, I couldn't have imagined it better. Nah, especially the big X's. Oh, yeah. but They were the killer. Yeah, but... um. Now we get into the opening contest, which was Daniel Bryan versus... Tr oh, no, no, no. Before that, I'm sorry. It was the immortal Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold Steve Austin, as well as the most electrifying man in all of sports entertainment history, The Rock. What would you think of the segment? I, all I have to say was it was a mark-out moment. That's all I, I have to say. I mean... You got WrestleMania 30. What what else do you what else do you need in WrestleMania 30 to make it big? To have The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Hulk Hogan in it, and that just made made my day. Well, made my 20 minutes. Yeah. Um. If you enjoyed that segment, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. The con segment concluded with well. I first should say that WrestleMania 30 actually took place at the Silver Dome. If you did not know, Hulk Hogan botched his lines to another extent. Yeah, he really botched his lines. Really. <laughs> to be honest. I don't think this guy can stick to the script or at least learn it. Yeah. Because he, he actually does need acting lessons. <laughs> um, But the segment ends with... Beers for everyone. Beers for Stone Cold, of course. Beers for Hulk Hogan and beers for The Rock. And they had to clean up the ring before the first match. And that first match was... Or what were you saying? Yeah, they had to clean up clean up the ring because th there was beer all over it. Yeah. That's all I need. That's all I said. And then the first match that they needed to clean up for was Daniel Bryan... <laughs> Versus Triple H. I want to talk about Triple H's entrance. The two ladies helping him out of his chair, I actually found out, were Sasha Banks and Miss Charlotte from NXT. Yep. He, he, I, actually, that was a sick, that was one of the best entrances I've seen Triple H. And he actually did look like Shao Kahn from Mortal Kombat. Actually, he actually really did. Especially when he came out with those two ladies. He actually did. His entrance was fantastic. I thought they pulled it off really well. I was hoping he'd kind of have the King of Kings music, but they played the game. And it was, overall, I think they did a wonderful job with the entrances, with Triple H's in particular, 
oops, excuse me, and with the entrances in general throughout the entire show. Yeah, I think that one. And we we don't really have to talk about Daniel Bryan's because you must be guessing how that went. And all we could say is yes. Yep. It went good. <laughs> um, Daniel Bryan's attire. What what, what was on his um, boots? Oh, it no. I guessed, and I think I got it right. It was goat goat legs, basically. <laughs> that's that's what I thought. I was just so and confused. I think it was because it it would make sense. Goat legs. Yeah. Um. But that match, though, it was whoa, 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 whoa! It like knocked my socks off. I I knew it, that match had a lot of potential, especially with the way they built it up. And in my opinion, they lived up to that potential what it was like two pedigrees and then the running knee to conclude the match yeah and it was pretty the motion was high because like daniel bryan's been getting this bad treatment this burial since summer slam summer slam of 2013 so he had to take it out on somebody and that somebody was triple h yeah um i remember i was there live at SummerSlam. When Daniel Bryan won the WWE Championship and when Triple H Pedigree, when the whole thing started, and I I was in shock. I mean, I was sitting there with my friend and we were like, whoa. I mean, we were excited. We were like, yes, like Daniel Bryan has clean. He beat John Cena clean. And it was absolutely amazing. And then I was shocked that Triple H, I knew Randy Orton was going to come out. But when Triple H hit the pedigree and Randy Orton comes in and cashes in, it was just absolutely a shock moment. Just like a few other things that has happened and this WrestleMania 30. To, to be honest, I, I read an ac- accidental spoiler of that. Like, Daniel Bryan wins, Randy Orton cashes it in. So I went and watched it and I thought, oh, so Daniel Bryan must be very hurt and then Randy Orton must cash in. I didn't know, I didn't know Triple H was going to do that. Yeah. I was so shocked. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Some of... Biggest surprises in this WrestleMania. Yep. Um, but, yeah, Daniel Bryan defeats him cleanly. Stephanie was wearing some weird-ass outfit. I have no idea what it was. It was just non-PG. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah, and then the next match was, I'm pretty sure, was it The Shield versus King yeah, of the New Age Outlaws? And that match, I had a feeling it was going to be a little a mediocre match, which it was, because I remember hearing the New Age Outlaws coming out like, oh, you didn't know and then I heard that I got something to eat, and then I come back, I see a double, triple power bomb. Well, that sounded weird, double, triple power bomb. And then the match was over just like that. And like the entrance for the Shield, it was basically an aces and eights from TNA. They they had those masks, and I was I was I was marking out. Yeah. But at the same time, I was so confused. Like have the eight have. The Shield joined the Aces and Eights or something. Oh, goodness, the but, Aces and Eights and TNA. I'm glad that that went on for way too long. Yeah, I, I've stopped watching TNA. It's getting boring. Yeah, um, but that match, I guess you would consider it your typical squash match of the evening. Well, ev- ev- probably everybody predicted that match right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that... That was an easy match to predict. Yeah, and then uh, what was the was it the battle royal that was up next? Yeah, the battle royal. It was next, and yeah, that was a shock because I predicted Big Show because I just played it safe because I didn't know who else was had a chance, but I knew he was gonna lose. But to but to who? But I am so glad it was Cesaro because the way the way he lost. I mean, I, I I could give I could give a clap to this guy right now because he deserves it. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, it reminded me of WrestleMania three when Hulk Hogan body slammed Andre the Giant, and in this case, Cesaro body slammed Big Show right out of the ring. Mhm. Shades of Shades of WrestleMania two. Um. With another Shades of. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, whoa. No, you go first. Okay, um, another couple of remarkable moments in the match, I thought, was when Kofi Kingston was nearly eliminated, and then he hops back in because his feet technically didn't touch the floor. They were on the steps. 
Um, the other one was Brad Maddox, of course, being eliminated first. And uh, I think that was the major highlights in that match for me that I enjoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's nothing else really to say. Just just that elimination with Shades of WrestleMania 2 when Hulk Hogan body slammed Andre the Giant. That's all that's all that there is, basically. Yeah. And the next match was Oh goodness. John Cena versus Bray Wyatt. The legacy of John Cena Whoa, they just but, will not end it. Yeah, every everybody was saying the legacy of John Cena and I was saying, What legacy? What legacy are you talking about, guys? Yeah. You must be joking. But yeah, he he's lived out a pretty good career, I will say that, but not a legacy. Just, uh... And that match are not was the start of the of the that's when Damien came with his ticket to the WrestleMania thirty. That's that's when it all fell down. It was I mean, why couldn't John Cena put Bray Wyatt over? But I want to talk about some of the highlights in that that I really enjoyed. First off was Bray Wyatt's live music entrance. I'm pretty sure it was the real band who actually wrote the song that played the entrance theme for him. Mm-hmm. And then, um, as I said, I think it was in Tom Cushney's stream yesterday, it was I was hoping that Bray Wyatt would come out with a legitimate lantern. I mean, he did when they did the little video thing backstage when they're like, we're here. But then he comes out once again with a LED lantern. I don't know why. Just give him, come on, it looks better with the legitimate fire. Yep. Definitely. But, yeah. it That was a cool bit. Um, they, another thing I did not like was when John Cena kicked out of the Sister Abigail. The Sister Abigail is meant to put you down, and you just can't kick out of it. I was surprised when Bray White kicked out of an attitude adjustment. I was marking out. Uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I also saw um, Shades of Husky Harris. I know I'm going to get so much hate for mentioning Husky Harris, but I did see Shades of Husky Harris when he did the back drop when he bounced off the ropes and he did he landed on his back on John Cena. That was Husky Harris's finisher back a few years ago. No hate, just bringing that up. And that spot where John Cena was attempting the five knuckle shuffle, then Bray Wyatt out of nowhere just does that spider thing. Just looks so creepy and so ugh. Yeah. Left a bad ugh. I I was freaking out of ugh. But it was great. It wasn't, it wasn't as scary, but... Ugh, he played it, it off creepy. well. But, yeah. And John Cena ended up winning, which was a disappointment because he didn't have a reason to... He didn't have a reason to win. Like, with The Rock and John Cena, he had a reason to win because it was a rivalry. Mm-hmm. But with Wyatt, John Cena, there wasn't really any reason. Yeah. I mean... Legacy? What legacy? No reason. Yeah, this does nothing no. for John Cena. And, yeah, that was when Damien... Ke- that was when Damien stepped into the, the gates and asked, can you check my ticket to the ticket holders? The next match was when Damien was sitting down and having a nice cold beer. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the next match. That's when that happened. And I I don't want to talk about it, so I'll, <laughs> I'll leave Ryan to talk about The next match, about. oh goodness, it was Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker, The Streak versus The Beast Incarnate. And and before, before we say the result, let's just run them through the match, because yeah. it, it was a pretty boring match. Yeah. It was a really boring match. The worst streak match I've ever seen. Uh-huh. And figures. But, yeah. Basically, the the entrances were cool. Both of them. Mm-hmm. They were alright. Then, then, I think Undertaker hit Brock Lesnar. Then, then they go back e- at each other. Then, I don't know what happened. Undertaker was in the lead. Then Brock Lesnar got his leg, injured the leg. It was just boring. Yeah. That's 
I can't recall the match. That's how boring it oh, was. Oh, yeah. No, it seemed like both guys were out of it. They could, the, the match, I guess, had a lot of potential. One thing I'm going to say is I'm going to go buy a Brock Lesnar beanie, eat, sleep, conquer the streak. Yeah. It. To be honest, the thing that would have would have bit the nail, would have made it better, was to change the simulation. Something no no DQ. Yeah. Because that would have been more entertaining, more like, whoa, whoa, he just hit Undertaker, an old man, with a chair. Whoa, I need to see this. Yeah, it would have been a lot but, greater. But, yeah, we yeah. T okay, Brock Lesnar did, like, two F5s to the Undertaker, and then he kicked out of both of them. And then he tried an, a tombstone, then it didn't work. Then he tried another one straight after, and I knew this would not work. Mm -hmm. And he he tried it. Brock Lesnar like turned him around, did another F five, one, two, and then I was like, yeah, and then three, and then I was speechless. I was like, did the referee just botch or something? And then I just looked at the crowd the crowd were like in shock there's no noise at all no noise no noise not even any yeses no no's no noise and then i think it was josh matthews said it and your winner is brock lesnar and then yeah he, just, he it took him like five minutes before he actually re announced the winner i was like oh like the look on it was just silence but it it was a it was a smart tactic to do that because like they had that they had to have that little wait did he just count three mm -hmm. before he actually released his name because yeah terrible time terrible time thank you taker um he's provided us twenty well I guess technically twenty two years but twenty one years of greatness I've been lucky enough to see what WrestleMania twenty three four five six seven eight nine. I've been lucky enough to see seven streak retentions. But yeah. Uh he he's been my favorite since I I started watching wrestling and I am so glad I got to watch him live at the O2 Arena last year before he retires. I'm so happy and I'm so glad and just thank you Taker. I know I'm sad that you didn't retire with your streak intact but that's not my decision but yeah you still lived a great 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 career and you your your hall of fame induct induct inductee like induction that will be the greatest day of one of the greatest days of my life basically mm -hmm. so yeah thank you taker <laughs> God. Yeah, but definitely disappointing. Disappointing, especially because Brock Lesnar, a guy that only comes in like two matches a month, uh -huh. defeated the streak. Yeah. It's just someone, person I think should have defeated the streak is John Cena because he is such a good guy. Like, I don't like his wrestling, but his personality and... Him going to like make a wish foundations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it's brilliant. So I think he should have defeated the streak. Yeah. But you can't, you can't, good things nev never happen and you can't, you can't have everything. Yeah. I, I was surprised though. I, I thought that it actually, I thought they were going to change something or they, it was a mistake. Like, no, 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 no. Like, Brock actually didn't defeat the streak. We're sorry about that, Undertaker. You were supposed to kick out. Yeah. But it that, happened. I, but if it was a botch, I don't know how they would do it because they, they're not supposed to make it look like it's not real. Yeah. They're supposed to make it look like it's real. So, how would they do that? Would Mr. McMahon come out and say, no, 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 it wasn't. No, 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 we're restarting the match. Uh -huh. or something like that. But yeah, if you haven't followed my Twitter, which you probably haven't, <laughs> I made I made a bet with um one big YouTuber called 
by the name of Tom Kuchny. And yeah, we I made a bet saying Undertaker's gonna win. He made he said Brock Lesnar's gonna win. Then we said the loser has to make a YouTube video of calling the other guy awesome and I thought I was gonna get some free video promotion, <laughs> but I guess that's I uh, I'm I'm not even giving him video promotion. I'm just acting like I don't know. I'm acting like a slave or something like <laughs> that. Because there's no point. It's probably gonna get ten views. That's it. <laughs> but something I gotta do. I bet that's what happens. Yep. And then we move on into the main event: Randy Orton, Batista. No. No. And Daniel no. Bryan. Botch. <laughs> They botched Randy Orton's entrance music. They started off with his original one, which I absolutely love that um, theme song, and then they switch it over real quick. Like, after three seconds of that, they just said the hey at the beginning, and then they switched I Hear Voices. Yep. That, that, that could have been a great moment, just hearing that hey theme song one more time, but guess WrestleMania 30 just pooped on pooped <laughs> on my childhood um and then batista didn't get his pyro Ugh, that that bugged a lot too mm -hmm. i love it when he does the machine gun and daniel bryan still got a huge ovation i didn't see daniel bryan's entrance because my stream kind of cut out but i got it back but like apparently he still got a good he still I'm guessing he got a big ovation again. Yeah. Obviously. But yeah, the entrances were okay as far as I saw. Um so Yeah, and then moving into the match itself, pretty decent match. I mean you saw Batista and Randy Orton teaming up for the most part to beat up Daniel Bryan. A highlight of the match was when Batista they cleared out both the English and the Spanish announce tables. They picked Batista picked him up for a Batista bomb, and then Randy Orton did, like, an RKO, backwards RKO thing onto Daniel, smashing him through the Spanish announce table, and that was just a crazy moment for me. That, I thought they killed Daniel Bryan, and I, I just gotta say this, rest in peace, Spanish announce table. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done, like, 30 years of WrestleMania, and you're still breaking. <laughs> You should go into the Hall of Fame because you, out of all the superstars in the world, you endured the most pain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you're like Kenny. You like oh, Kenny. Oh yeah. And it's it's not even it's not even a joke because um, when you die like that and then you get rebuilt, it's just like, what's the point? Like it hurts. I don't like it. So. Why don't we just scrap the Spanish announce table and just keep the French one? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, every WrestleMania I can remember, the Spanish announce table's been broken. Um, but another thing was Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, come out to beat up Daniel Bryan as soon as he gets just some bit of momentum. And someone else came out with them, and I was very shocked. And it was none other than the man who gave Daniel Bryan the title, is what they say, at Night of Champions with the fast count, Scott. Armstrong. Yep, Scott Armstrong. He's he's been that little he's been that person that everybody's forgotten, but they still know him. Yeah. Cuz he's inf infamous. But yeah, he tried to he tried to screw Daniel. Well, he didn't try to screw him. He he didn't do a fast count or anything. Yeah. He just did a normal count. And then Daniel Bryan kicked out, so Mhm. Mm and then he knocked out all of them, including Steffi, Stephanie McMahon. And then Triple H got angry, tried to get up on the on the ropes, and then Daniel Bryan knocked him out. So that was the end of that. That was the end of them. Uh huh. And then it was just um. What was it? I think. Okay, I don't remember the order of this, but I think yeah, it was Daniel Bryan knocked out Randy Orton, Batista. Took him out of the ring. Batista tried to go for a cheeky pin. Uh -huh. he, he failed. And then... Ah! Oh, this match 
this match was supp is sick, but it's not that. I don't I don't know why I can't remember it. It was it was so something like ran Rand Yorn got got up. Uh, but Batista Batista bombed him or something like that. Then Daniel Bryan came in the ring. He hit the gave him. He hit the knee on Randy. I remember that. And then he did something. Or no, 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 no. He hit Batista. Hit a Batista bomb on Randy. I'm pretty sure. And then Daniel Bryan hit the knee on Batista because I was like, oh my god, Daniel, you have to go. With, like I was getting super mad when he tried to make when he. I mean, he did tap him out, but when he went for it, I was like, why not just pin him and win? You know, like that. But yeah, Daniel Bryan hit the knee on Batista. I thought he was gonna pin, but instead he gets him to tap out with the cross face. Um, yeah, yes, lock. And but. new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Daniel Bryan. And that's, that was pretty it. Ending on a good note, mm -hmm. I, was, I was still, I was still a bit mad, but at least I had some happiness. Yep. And to be honest, if I was to give this WrestleMania a grade... It, to be honest, it was the, it was one, it wasn't the worst WrestleMania I've seen, but it was one of the worst. But I would probably give it a, f I, I'd be fair, I'd give it a four out of ten. I'd give it a chance. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> well, we we have the ex opposite opposite opinions on things. It's just it's just that. That Undertaker thing, man. Yeah. I know. I know it wasn't WWE's fault. It was probably Undertaker that wished for it, but I just can't get over it. Yeah. I don't know who to turn to. Like, I can, I can probably forget about it. Yeah. But it will still be there, and something like that you can never forget. Uh huh. It's like his his streaks ending. His twenty twenty one and old streak has ended something you can't forget yep 21 and 1 and that was wrestlemania 30 it ended with yes chance filling the mercedes-benz silver D i mean superdome excuse me um thank you guys all for listening to this wrestlemania 30 review hit the like button down below if you enjoyed go check out the j-man's channel there will be a link in the description yes. below and we will see yes 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 and we'll see you guys yes. later peace out guys Peace out.